Welcome back to Down the Stretch, everyone. Mike Veach to my left. I'm Mark Cassano, and the disc staff goes to Secret Gypsy for last week's guest, Ronnie Werner, Robbie Alvarado, by a length and a quarter over Distorted Passion. You saw Zeta Bell pull up. You were online no, last, last night. Last night, the last we know at Rudin Riddle, things are okay. Not a bad prognosis. I hope that hasn't changed as of this morning. Good. Really. All right. To introduce our next guest this morning, as I mentioned, we haven't had him since the Take the Tour days. Here's Michael. And the tour it was indeed, and we welcome back to this studio David Fox, who won a couple of very big races at Belmont with that fine filly, and now he's looking at a graded race in Florida on sort of the comeback trail, we hope, for him. And I'm speaking of big drama's return today. So, David, if you're there this morning, welcome back to Down the Stretch. Good morning, good morning. With I Mike and Mark. I thought you guys forgot about me. No. <laughs> oh, never, never, never. <laughs> so, David, we're speaking for our audience about big drama who's coming back in the swale today. So my first question is, tell our audience the, the nature of the injury that prevented him from coming back as a three-year-old until today. Basically, he kicked himself in the back shin with his other hind leg. Mm-hmm. And... and kicked himself hard enough to bruise the bone in that little area of bone about the size of a maybe a dime or less, it, it kind of dies in there, and it becomes a foreign body, and the body has to get it out of there. Hmm. And so it can't do it on its own, so we had to go in there and scrape that bone and get that dead bone out of there and then sew him back up, and he was fine. Well, David, we're glad about that. You know, when, when I look or we look at his past performances, and you did so well in the Florida Stallion Series, it, you know, the thought comes to mind that when Mark and I do this show every year, a, a guy that runs together a bunch of races like that, that usually gets a look at the Breeders' Cup. Um, what happened after the Stallion Series? Anything? You just you know decided not to I go? Was, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Hindsight's twenty twenty, but they put us on top of the Breeders' Cup. We, there would have been no way we could have run in the Breeders' Cup the way they set the races last year. Uh-huh. You know, our main focus was the Florida Stallion Stakes. He came out of the Florida Stallion Stakes, flying colors. Yep. And and now we're 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 a week into the Breeders' Cup. That's right. Two weeks into the Breeders' Cup, it wouldn't have made sense to go from that point. And and watching the race after, I mean, they didn't really. It wasn't, it wasn't that impressive to me. I thought, think he would have fit in there very well. Mm hmm. Well, that that I uh, thank you for your candor there. But you did make the Delta jackpot, and we're going to take a look at that momentarily. I mean, that gave me almost six weeks. I didn't hear you. That gave me six weeks between the final stallion stakes and the Delta jackpot. Well, we're watching that race momentarily, David, and I'd like you to talk about his effort at Delta Downs, and here he is for audience number seven in the jackpot. They've just left the gate. Talk about this performance, David. I mean, if you watch him, he, he leaves the shoot, and, and Westside Bernie kind of bumps his, his rear end and steps on a hind foot and bends his shoe down. Mm. And uh, talking to the doc after the race, they went into the turn, and Alvarado wouldn't get over, kind of carried us out, and never really gave us an opportunity to set in behind horses. Mm -hmm. So between that and being carried wide in the turn, he kind of got a little tough on with the rider and, and was really dragging him. And at that point, you know, Coe just kind of said, you know, no one else wants to lead. I'm going to go ahead and go on from this point. And then, you know, basically the rest is history. And that is exa exactly what's happening you know, David, big drama is, is by an honest-to-goodness Florida sire in Montbrook. Uh, however, he and his broodmare sire, Notebook, are, for the most part, speed-oriented. And that said, your guy has handled two turns pretty nicely. Was that something of a surprise? Um, maybe not so much. I mean, he's a very kind horse. He's rateable. He'll do whatever you ask him to do. David, today you're going in the swale. You're coming back at seven furlongs. It's been quite a layoff. Why did you pick this race for the comeback? Well, I thought, that, you know, number one reason, he had he'd come into this race real good. Mm -hmm. And number two, it, it's, it, to be honest, it's a little bit convenient. You know, I don't have to go to, there's a race in Tampa in, in another week, mm -hmm. but I have to go to Tampa. Mm -hmm. A lot of horses have been needing a race over Tampa's surface. Okay. <laughs> Coming from Calder, yep. I think I'm safe going over to Gulfstream and running over a little bit tighter surface. You know, the horse is trained and trained well here at Calder. We've always been here. Um, I'm going to go to a little, uh, probably a track he's going to get over a little easier. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, and um, I just, you know, time, t timing wise was right. It's time to run. He's a nice moving horse. You're on the outside. I'm going to assume, I shouldn't assume things, I'm assuming you're pretty happy to be parked outside today. I love being outside. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Okay, this is a derby sort of a weekend, and I am sure, and I've been paying attention, we don't like to bring these things up, but if you do big today, and you were once thinking of the Florida Derby, uh, what might be next up, David? <laughs> you know what? We're going to um, kind of let the horse regroup after this race, depending on how he runs, and, and make a decision. I don't exactly see the Derby in our sights right now. Okay, okay. And nor do the connections. Harold, I mean, Harold has never been like... Uh, it has not had derby fever. Well, we're, we're actually pretty glad to hear that. That's terrific. David, as always, it's fun to speak with you. We're glad we got you back today. Good luck this afternoon. We'll be watching. Thank you very much. Have a nice one. Very Thanks, welcome, David. ladies and gentlemen. David Fox and Big Drama returns in the swale today. He's got to be happy to be sitting outside in Abs that race. That's got to fit God. him perfectly. Are you kidding? Yeah. Abar can look inside yep. of him and watch the race unfold. Um, you know, that that's a perfect spot yeah. for him. And, you know, I kid about the Delta jackpot, but that, 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 was, was, really that was a good effort. That was a nice effort. It really was. That was a very, very solid effort. Uh, and uh, we'll see how he does later this afternoon in the Swale. Now, the Swale is one race before the big one, the Florida Derby. John Velasquez has ridden in many, many big races. Uh, he will be riding in the Florida Derby this afternoon aboard the Jimmy Jerkins trained Quality Road, who I thought looked sensational in winning the Fountain of Youth. Um, Johnny had a chance to go to Dubai today and ride not only Indian Blessing, but pick up, you know, several other mounts uh, in a day where he could have earned a lot of money. Oh, you weren't kidding. But he stayed home to ride Quality Road. And yesterday, I had a chance to sit down and chat with John Velasquez. John, first off, congratulations.